Hi, it's Gazematic, and welcome back to the channel. And it's about that time of month again for another pickup video. Um, I don't know how long it is since I did the last one. I think it was about a month ago, maybe a little bit longer or a little bit less. Can't remember. Anyway, yeah, a pickup video, and I've got a couple of interesting bits and pieces. Uh, nothing amazing, but you know, just a couple of things that I've been after, including one thing that I've been after for quite a while. So, um, yeah, I'll just uh, get on with it. So the first thing I got was something that I actually got off eBay, and it's something that I have actually been after for quite some time. Um, yeah, there seems to be a recurring theme, actually, um, with pickups this month, because they all seem to be, a lot of them seem to be related around this particular franchise, but I'm going to just show this off straight away. Um, and that is, I managed to pick up a copy of Resident Evil 3 on the original PlayStation. Um, I have been after this for a while. I wasn't too bothered what format I got it on. Probably really wanted it on the PS1 because I've got Resident Evil 2 on the PS1. And um, But it's always been a bit of a silly price point. Uh, nothing too high, but a little bit more than what I wanted to pay for it. Um, and I managed to get this for six quid off eBay. And um, I've got to say, the guy who sold me this must have looked after it because it's practically brand new, immaculate. Um, as you can see, there's not a single mark on the box. Uh, the manual is immaculate, and the disc was as well. So yeah, I mean, um, yeah, and actually it, was, it wasn't even a buy it now, it was like an auction, which I normally lose, and the prices normally fly up to way more than what I'm prepared to pay for it. But I've been after this for ages, and uh, this is a really good copy of it. So yeah, I was made made up to get this for six quid. Um, love them. Well, I love all the Resident Evil games. One of my favourite uh, game franchises. But uh, I've played this one for quite a few years. So I'm looking forward to sticking this on and uh, having a go on it. So another thing that I got was I went into Tesco, um, the Tesco by us, a couple of weeks ago. And now and again, they have little sale things on, and they don't normally have that one. Uh, have too much in the one by us, to be honest. It's normally a little bit rubbish. But I noticed they have the usual guff out, which is, you know, loads of Skylanders uh, reduced and things like that on an end shelf um, at sort of the end of the games aisle. It's only a very small section, the game section. It's not even a text or a text, uh, like a Tesco Extra or something. It's a small Tesco. But they had um, about three copies of this which is Mario Kart on the Wii and they were a fiver so I actually bought all three of them <laughs> um, I traded two of them in for store credit in CEX which was alright I paid a fiver for them I think I got something like 18 quid per game for, for them and um, I decided to keep one um, which is still as you can see totally factory sealed now I'm probably not going to play this <laughs> or open it um, simply because I've got Mario Kart 8 and if I want to play Mario Kart I'll play Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U um, even though there's some tracks and things on this one that aren't on that one and if, it, if I did want want to go and uh, get it uh, I've already I've already got one of these wheels anyway so I'd probably just go and buy another copy because I can pick up another copy probably somewhere for about I don't know, probably six or seven quid to be honest. So I'm going to keep this one sealed in the box as a bit of a an investment sort of a, later on. I mean, I'll probably keep it to be honest, but you know, at some point you never know. I may decide I'm not that bothered and get rid of it only because it's sealed. But which is something I normally hate. I, you know, I'm not. I hate sort of people who aren't really into games and they just hold on to stuff for the value. But um, as much as I do, look, I enjoy Mario Kart. Um, I enjoy Mario Kart 8 a lot more than this one, so um, I'm not too. Uh, it wouldn't break my heart if I had to get rid of this. So, but it's just a nice find, and like I said, there was three of them, and I um, was lucky enough to sort of get rid of the other two. I mean, I could have put them on a uh, Facebook, on a on a trading forum or whatever, or I could have put them on eBay, but. Um, it was easier just for me to go down to CEX and just trade them in there and get the store credit and buy some games with it. So, uh, up next, a couple of PSP titles. Nothing amazing, really. Um, 
these are just charity stop uh, charity stop charity shop pickups so I've got Pit My Ride which I've never played um, to be quite honest I've never even watched the show uh, I believe this game is not much good to be honest but um, I think this is 50p so I've got that um, and I got these it was weird this because I got one in one charity shop and then about three days later saw the other one in another charity shop and both are the same price uh, 99p each so the first one is Spongebob Truth or Square this is a really good game um, I used to have this on the Wii um, and it's really really good it's a lot a lot of fun so yeah I picked that up the only thing is unfortunately there was no manual in it but you know I'm not too bothered about uh, for a PSP game for a 99p PSP game and the other game I got was about two days later from another show shot was Spongebob the Yellow Avenger which I've never played and that was a uh, 99p as well so and this one's complete it's got the manual and everything in it still love collecting for the PSP just because it's so cheap um, and you know it's nice to just um, pick them up when you see them there's loads of uh, loads and loads of titles for the PSP so I don't particularly collect for the DS so um, I prefer the PSP I picked up a couple of PlayStation 3 titles so again most of these some of these were charity shop pickups some of them I actually went out and bought so first one was need for speed the run this was uh, in a charity shop for 199 um, I like pretty much all the need for speed games the only one I'm not very keen on is um, Pro Street which I thought was terrible but um, this is actually pretty much in the rate of this game and this is a really good need for speed game um, I enjoyed this uh, I have been dipping in and out of it and it's, it's one of the better ones to be honest um, it didn't get much love when it came out I don't really understand why because I think it's a pretty decent uh, need for speed game so um, I picked up this is a game I think that I mentioned on a previous pickup video the last one I did um, and I liked it so much on the PSP that I had it on that I went out and bought the PlayStation 3 version this was three quid um, and that's GeForce. Now, before you start laughing and thinking it's a kid's game, it is a kid's game and it's based on the film, but it's a really, really solid platform and a really good game. And uh, like I said on the uh, on the last video when I was talking about the PSP version, it's very much sort of like Splinter Cell but with a gerbil. So, um, and this game apparently you can play it in 3D, 3D glasses included. So you got the game and everything, but there, and you take this out, you get, look, you get a little 3D specs with the game so uh, I haven't opened them so but you know I hate that kind of sort of blue red 3d it kind of wrecks my eyes to be honest it kind of ruins the games colors and things like that so I've just been playing it in normal but yeah it's a really good platformer and if you, and if you see this cheap it's worth picking up it's a lot of fun to play pretty tough in places as well um, Another game that I got, this was a Pioneer Charity Shop, and I got this because, I, I kind of explain when I'll show you the other game, um, this was Family Game Night, this was 99p, and um, yeah, it just sort of like a bit of fun, and it had Mousetrap on, I love Mousetrap, and I can play this with my little boy, so this has got, um, it's got Cluedo, Twister, which isn't Twister, it's just like a rhythm action game on it, it's, I don't know why they called it Twister, it's literally one of those where there's a line and you just got to press, there's like a sequence of buttons and then you just got to match it and that's their version of Twister, so I don't quite know how that works, but some of the other games are alright, Cluedo's uh, okay, uh, Game of Life's pretty good, Game of Life, and uh, the best one on there is Mousetrap, Mousetrap's really good, so... Uh, another game picked up, I actually bought this off CEX with some credit that I got. Um, I think it was £8 or something. Um, I was originally going to get it off eBay, but then I saw it was going for about 20 quid on eBay or 15 to £20. And then CEX had it in stock for £8 or £9 pound or something. So, and I've heard this game's really good. I have been playing it and it's a lot of fun. And that is 3D Dot Game Heroes. Now this is made by From Software, who make uh, Bloodborne and um, Dark Souls, and um, what's that other one? 
uh, Demon Souls. Yeah. So you know, but it's nowhere near as hard as that. Now it is tough in places, but but it's not like rock hard. This has got a really really nice kind of art style to it. It's uh, very Zelda-ish, based on like, you can tell very much it's influenced by the original Zelda. But the art style is very kind of, kind of Minecrafty. Um, it's just very unusual the art style on it. If I can just zoom in and show you, actually, I think I can show you some um, screenshots. I don't know if you can see them on the back. The screenshots. It's just a really weird kind of blocky world, and um, yeah, it, but but it's a, like an RPG. But it's a lot of fun. It's really good. I didn't think I'd be overly keen on it, and I thought, well, I'll get it, and if I don't like it, I can always trade it or, you know, sell it or whatever. But no, I'm I'm really enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. So, um, some newer titles now that I managed to pick up. Um, now a couple of these I've had before and traded them in, and then I've kind of got them back. So I'll go through them. Um, First one's kind of related to that last one of the other games I showed you, and that is Monopoly Family Fun Pack. Now I did download the Monopoly uh, Monopoly Plus off the PSN network when it was on sale. It was about three quid, and um, it's good. You know, I, I do think the game cheats, but it's good. It's a lot of fun. If you like Monopoly, it's a good game. But I did really want this one because it's got my Monopoly, and where you can design your own Monopoly boards, and it's got a little kind of card game on it called Monopoly Deal, which is actually quite a lot of fun as well. Um, this was in the cash converters for four quid, and I thought, well, you know, even though I've got the Monopoly game, I can get the whole package for pretty much the same price. So um, yeah, so I picked that up on disc. It was good to have on disc as well. So. Um, I picked up another copy of this was good this actually because I saw this in in game which is very unusual is this Bloodborne game of the year edition now I did have Bloodborne already but I was flicking through their pre-owned games and they had Bloodborne for 30 quid and then they had Bloodborne Game of the Year edition for 30 quid amongst them all for the same price. So I kind of got my copy of Bloodborne, ran down and kind of traded that in. I think I got 25 or something like that for or 26 uh, in a CEX which was three doors away from the game and then I kind of ran across and got this for 30. So I think it, so it ended up, I ended up paying like something like three quid for the DLC but this is the uh, I did check with the guy in the shop first to make sure that the DLC which is the old hunters what's it called the old hunters pack or something was on the disc and not a code and he said it was so and it is because I've just unlocked it in the game the only downside was because which anyone who's played Bloodborne will know is a major ball like is that the my old save game is not compatible with this so I had to start the whole game from the beginning again and this is one probably one of the few games you don't ever want to have to start from right from the beginning again but I have and I've now actually got further than I was before and for some reason I'm finding it a bit easier I don't know if they've done something in this one or maybe I just chose a different starting character I can't remember but I'm finding it a little bit easier to get. I'm not saying it's easy because it's really not. But it's easier than it was the first time I played it. And um, I've been playing a lot of this. I just, yeah, I always harp on about this game. It's such a great game. So, yeah. Picked up the Game of Year edition of that. Uh, I picked up a copy of Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Now, I already had this on Steam on PC. I did buy it when it came out on the PC. But I went in Tesco. And they had it an offer for 20 quid on the PS4. And I think it was. Um, there was some other deal. Because anyway, I, mean, I got this, and I also got the new add on. It wasn't the, I didn't buy the season pass, but I did buy the new add on as well. You know, the uh, the Awakening that's just come out. And um, yeah, this was really, really good. So um, the single player is not the best one. I still think the original Black Ops is better. But this definitely got the best multiplayer on. Um, since the original Black Ops, and um, there's just a, a lot of content on it, you know, 
it, certainly for 20 quid it's definitely worth the money because there's just so many different modes on it and um, you know Call of Duty is one of those games you either love it or hate it um, a lot of people just there are, I think there are a lot of people out there that just slag Call of Duty off for the sake of slagging Call of Duty off because it's popular and all the teenagers all the, all the kids love it but you know I don't really give a crap about all that if I like a game I like a game and I've always liked Call of Duty games um, and you know I just wanted a copy of this, and it was quite good because when I got it, it's been is it been double XP weekend or something on Call of Duty. So um, uh, I spent all weekend kind of playing online on this, which is something I haven't done since the original Black Ops. To be honest, I normally go to play online Call of Duty when a new one comes out and play on it for like a day or two, and or, or maybe a week, and then I get bored. But um, no, I'm actually quite enjoying this one. So yeah, it's kind of reinvigorated my online love for Call of Duty slightly. Um, even though, again, like I said, the single player is a little bit. It's a good game, it's just the story is just weird. So, another game I picked up was the Resident Evil Origins Collection. Um, now, I was going to download Res the, the new version of Resident Evil HD when it came out. But I wanted it. Um, I wanted it on a physical release, and they didn't release it on a physical release. Well, they did, but only on PS3 in Japan. Uh, I did see a couple of imports over here, but you know, they wanted like 30 quid for them, and I wasn't playing that. And then they announced that they were bringing uh, Zero out in a double pack. So yeah, so I hung on. Uh, I have played. I've just finished Resident Evil Zero on it. Because it's the only, one of the few Resident Evil games that I never actually finished um, originally. Um, I normally always finish Resident games, but I just never did finish that one. Um, I think I had it on the Wii. I didn't get it on the GameCube when it first came out. I got it on the Wii, and um, I don't know. I just couldn't get on with it. Uh, so I bought this and played it, and I actually really enjoyed it. It's pretty tough, um, but I haven't played the. Um, HD remake of the original yet, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little bit of a break. I'm going to—I've uh, just finished one literally about two nights ago, so I'm going to give it a break, go and play something else, and then I'll come back in a month, I don't know, about a month or so, and I'll start playing the HD remake of that one. Um, picked up. Now this isn't. This wasn't really a pickup. I um, my stepson came into me um, yesterday. Oh no, it was today, it was this morning, yeah, and said that he wanted to play Dying Light. Uh, he he seen me, I've been playing Dying Light, and he liked it, and he said he wanted to go and get it, and he had a game to trade in, and it was going to pay for it. So I said, oh, alright then. So he came in, and um, he gave me the game he was going to trade in, and I haven't got this game. Well, I did have it, and I wasn't so sure about it, and I thought, I'll trade it in while it's worth something rather than waiting a year or six months and trade it in and then think it's worth like a tenner. So I, I think I traded it in when it was worth about, I think I got 30 quid trading for it. And then he come in today and said he wanted to trade his version in and go down and get Dying Light from CEX. And I had a voucher for CEX, plus a, game, plus a game I wanted to trade in anyway, which would have covered his game that he wanted. So I gave him that and I said, I'll have your copy of this. And that is Fallout 4. Um, I had this on PS4, I, I did actually play it, I played for about a month and a half, pretty much solid, I played quite a lot of it, and then I saw it was, like I said, I saw it was still decent trading, so I traded it in, and I thought, I've still got my save game, I thought I'll pick it up later, I'll pick it up when it's about a tenner, a year or so, whatever, and I'll carry on playing it. But then he was getting rid of this, so I thought I'll get this, the only thing is I'll have to start the game again, which I'm not too bothered about, but you get a code for Fallout 3 which plays on the Xbox One anyway so um, I thought yeah which he hasn't used he didn't like it he played about two hours of it and he just said it was too hard he's um, yeah he doesn't really do hard games he's one of these that sort of, sort of plays Call of Duty and FIFA and that's about it so but he's just started playing Dying Light so I'll give him that um, excuse me just gonna have a little drinky Um, what else did I pick up? Oh, I'll show you this. I got this today in a shop. Charity shop. <laughs> Walked into a charity shop. And um, I picked this up. And that is a G-Con 2 gun. 
And as you can see, I've still got a price on it. It does need a bit of cleaning up. But I've still got a price on it. I got it for one ninety nine, And I have actually been after these. And I'll, and I'll ex one of these. And I'll explain why in a minute. Because it's actually related to another pickup I'm going to show you in a minute. Yeah, um, I've got the original G-Con box. The G-Con 1. But I've never had a copy of uh, a G-Con 2. Uh, I don't really know too much about them. I'm assuming this is the proper one. Because it's got Namco. Um written on the side of it somewhere. I think it's there. It's got Nam uh, sure there. it's got Namco written on the side of it. So I'm gonna assume this is the proper light gun. Uh, but this one's a little bit different as you know anyone who's used it, it's got the D-pad on the back, the original didn't and the buttons on the side and I think it's got a button underneath there so you can reload like that. Um, yeah so that's I picked that up and that was 199 it just needs a little bit of cleaning up um, but made up to get that because, like I said, I only had a G-Con 1 and the uh, Time Crisis 2 and stuff like Vampire Night and things like that. They, they don't really play that well with the original light gun. So I was made up to get this one. Um, another couple, another pickup I got was, picked this up on Thursday. Um, it's Assassin's Creed Chronicles which is the little side scrolling stealth game now I wasn't sure about this at first because I'd heard it wasn't that great but then I saw it was a bit like uh, what's that ninja game on, on the PC Shadow of the Ninja or something it's called and I really love that game I think it's brilliant so I've been I bought this and I wanted I kind of guessed that um, when they bought the first one out and they said they were releasing other ones I kind of guessed that they'd probably bring wait till all of them were out and they'd stick them on the disc and they have so I was waiting rather than downloading them when they first came out because I did quite fancy them originally I was waiting until um, they all came on a physical release and they have so I've started playing this I played a little I played quite a bit of the China one and I played a little bit of the Russian one just to have a look at I haven't played the India one yet um, and I love it I think they're brilliant I'm really really enjoying it really good stealth games um, really nice really visually beautiful games to look at as well it's almost like watching kind of a moving oil painting at times they're really really sharp and really really kind of aesthetically pleasing to look at these games um, and a little bit different for Assassin's Creed as well um, so yeah I'm really enjoying this I'm like I said, I'm about two hours into the, the first one, the Chine one. I'm going to play them in order. So um, I just thought I'd dip my toe into the Russian one to see what it looked like because um, the setting kind of interested me. But yeah, um, I'd actually recommend it. And it's pretty cheap. Uh, I think it's only about 20 quid. So yeah, definitely worth picking up. A couple of Wii games now. Um, this one I've done a review for the other day on my channel. And that is Devil's Third. I'm not going to go too much into this one. If you want to know what I think of this game, click my other video and watch my review of it. So, but yeah, Devil's Third, the game that has pretty much been slated by everyone um, except me. So, yeah, Devil's Third. And another Wii U game I got, and I only got this because I went into Argos and it had been reduced to £14 or something. No, £13. And that was Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Which is really good and really fucking hard. <laughs> so, as are, are most of the Donkey Kong games, but this one, um, yeah, it's, it's tough, but it's a lot of fun and it, and it looks beautiful. So, yeah, I'm sure anyone who's remotely interested in Wii U will probably have played this game. So, yeah. Um, a couple of Xbox original games. So, we have. Um, Hunter the Reckoning which is kind of a top down hack and slash I wouldn't say it's an RPG really. is it an RPG? Not really no. it's kind of a top down hack and slash vampire game uh, a lot of fun, the reason I got this one is because um, these were all, a lot of these ones that come up now is uh, I got from CX because I had a voucher and I thought rather than wandering around the shops, um, I'll spend it online. So I ordered a big load of games. I was like, I think I ordered 10 games from CEX. 
think it was, yeah, it was 10 games and it came to just under 20 quid. So this was one of them, Hunter the Reckoning. Uh, oh no, yeah, Hunter the Reckoning. This one is a Hunter the Reckoning Redeemer. And I got this one simply because I've got the other one and I wanted to complete the set. That's Kingdom Under Fire, the Crusaders. Um, I've got uh, Kingdom Under Fire Heroes on the original Xbox and I wanted to get to them both. So I picked that up. Again, these were, none of these were that much. I mean, we're talking a couple of quid each. Um, if that, some of them were like a quid, some of them were one pound fifty. Um, I got this game because I saw it on the GameCube in, C in, a, in a CEX and it was about six quid and I quite fancied the game but I didn't want to pay six quid for it. Then I saw that it came out on PlayStation and it was like a pound. So, And that is Sphinx the Cursed Mummy and I do like any games that are kind of um, based in Egypt or anything like that, you know, kind of uh, these old archaeological things with mummies and pharaohs coming back to life and all this stuff. So yeah, and this is a really good platformer actually. The only thing that pisses me off, and especially with CX, there's no bloody manual in it. So um, I'll have to keep out for another copy, maybe pick up the manual. But it's a pretty cheap game to get anyway. Um, I went out with my mate the other day, Space Raptor. He's got a channel on YouTube as well. Check him out. He does some really good let's plays. Um, and pick this up I was on an R about it and then he just went oh just fucking get it if you want it if you like the first one so I did that is Manhunt 2 uh, I've got the original on PlayStation 2 I have seen this around quite a few times um, I've seen it on um, the Wii quite a few times and I think I've seen it on the PSP as well but I wanted it on PlayStation 2 because I've got the first one on PlayStation 2 uh, yes yeah, so I've been playing um, Sorry, I haven't been playing it. Uh, actually, I've been playing it at the first one, uh, Manhunt 2. So this was in really good nick. So it was, I'm glad he, I'm glad he taught me into getting it because it wasn't actually cheap. This game, I think it was about six, six quid, which is more than I usually would pay for a PS2 game, uh, unless it's a really rare one, obviously. Um, but I, I haven't seen it around on PS2 that much, to be honest. I've seen it on lots of other things, but not on PS2. And uh, it was in particularly good nick as well. So the disc is immaculate. It's got the manual there, which is in really good nick. So I didn't mind paying a little bit extra for it. And then a couple more games. Again, sticking with Resident Evil. These are just games I got from CX that I wanted to kind of bulk out my collection with. So Resident Evil Dead Aim. Um, again, not a game at all. Believe it or not, um, I've actually played. It's um, it wasn't actually a game that I was aware of, a Resi game that I wasn't aware of. It's unusual for me. I mean, I was aware of it, um, but only up until a couple of years ago did I find out about it. You know, um, so I just picked it up. Um, again, that will come in handy with the old icon. You can use that with this. So yeah. Although I can't imagine it works very well moving around, but it's worth a go anyway. So, Resident Evil Dead Aim. Uh, I've only got one more to get now, and that is, well, two. I've got Resident Evil Survivor and Survivor 2 that I want to try and pick up. Um, I was bidding on Resident Evil Survivor, the original PS1 version on eBay, but I lost it. Uh, I lost it by two pence as well. The guy bid me by two pence. So I wasn't very really keen on that. And it was by the same seller who was selling the uh, Nemesis game so it probably would have been in really good condition as well and I also got a copy of Resident Evil 4 um, I did have a copy of this on the Wii on the Wii uh, but I wanted the PlayStation 2 version because most of my other resis are on PS2 and this is what I played it on originally and this is the version I had originally with the tin um, of course back in the day I probably traded it in whatever but uh, it's not hard to get hold of in the tin, you know, it's not rare or anything, but I just wanted a copy of the tin. So, okay, it's complete. It's in good nick and everything, so yeah. Everyone sort of raves about 4 being the best game, but I don't think it is. I still think 2 is the best game. Really looking forward to the remake of 2. Um, 
picked up this. This is from CEX. Um, they don't usually have this online because um, I always check. I was checking and checking for it, and I've been checking for months, and it never comes in their stock because um, it goes for about 15 16 pound online normally but they sell it for 350 <laughs> and it finally came in so I ordered it and that's beautiful Joe 2 but the first one around here that's the first one so I've now got the set um, I've also got the PSP one which is um, I can't know what it's called there's, but there's one I haven't got which came out of the GameCube which is like a I think it's Rumble or something like that there's one that came out of the GameCube that I haven't got so I need to get hold of that. Um, these are really good. Um, if you don't know what Beautiful Joe is, sort of like uh, side scrolling kind of beat em up, weird kind of superhero y thing. But the art style is because it's really, really nice art style. So yeah. Um, Pick this game up because my son had it. Well, I did have this originally on the PlayStation 3. I'm um, a little boy used to play it. But. Um, I think we traded it in and it goes for a fortune now. I think it goes for like 17 or 18 quid. Still, it's a really old game. But the PS2 version doesn't go for 17 or 18 quid. It goes for about £2.50. And to be quite honest, there's nothing between them. Because it's a PS3 game that looks shit on the PS3. Um, it, the PS3 version I played doesn't look any better than the PS2 version. And that is the Incredible Hulk. Obviously, the PS2 3 version is probably slightly HD, if you like. But as far as I could see, it didn't look any better. In fact, I actually thought this one looked a little bit better. Just my opinion. So, um, yeah. Not the best Hulk game in the world, but I did want a copy of it. Um, and I just wanted a copy of it, but I wasn't prepared to pay £18 for it. So, again, if I see the, um, the PS3 or the Xbox 360 version pretty cheap, I might pick it up just to have it sort of in HD but it looks pretty good in normal so um, another game I got from the CEX sort of haul was Endgame this is a game you see everywhere in the, sh in the charity shops and the reason you see it everywhere because it's a light gun game um, yeah and um, <laughs> this was 75p. The only reason I got this game is because when I got all my games from CEX, I still had 75p on the voucher. So I was sitting there going through the list of PS2 games that only cost 75p, and this one popped up. And I thought, yeah, go on then, because it's a light gun game, and I've got a light gun. So, yeah. And even better now, because I've got the proper light gun. So I picked that one up, and yeah, it was actually pretty good, this game. The only thing I don't like about this game is. Um, you can't play it with a G-Con 1 because normally on like some time crisis you're shooting I'll get, I'll get the gun for a point so you're shooting away yeah and to reload you kind of point the gun away like that shoot and that reloads the gun then you kind of shoot well with this game you've got to actually press the button on the side to, so you're kind of shooting away and you've got to reload you've got to sort of bring it back and it's a bit of a pain in the arse to be honest I'm just used to normal time crisis where you just point the gun away or whatever um, so this one might be better because it's on the bottom there so maybe you can just or maybe hopefully you can use that so I can just press the button there and reload but yeah anyway end game it's okay it's okay um, Hunter the Reckoning again another one the Wayward this only came out of the PS2 this one otherwise I'd have got it on the original Xbox um, I've got all of them now like I said there were three games that came out for in that series and I wanted um, I wanted all of them so yeah this one only came on the PS2 this was pretty cheap as well it's complete the case is a bit knackered the actual things are alright that's just the case a bit of plastic script on it but yeah get a new case for it good as new um, I've got, I've got, whoop, I dropped it. I've got Wipeout Fusion which came out God knows when. Um, I'm not a massive fan of the Wipeout games, but again, this was like 20. I think it's 25p this game. So <laughs> I just picked it up because it's Wipeout. I think it's one of the worst. It's not one of the better ones, but you know, I don't mind for 25p. Only a couple of games to go now. So these are the last two, I think, for this video anyway. And that is Ghostbusters. Now 
there's two versions of this game. There's this version, which came out on this and the Wii. And then there's the version that came out on the PS3 and the Xbox 360. Um, the covers are different. I don't even see there. On this version, the Ghostbusters are sort of cartoony. On the other version, they're kind of the real actors. And I have played the other version. And looking at online reviews and just searching around and reading into it and everything, everyone says this is the better game. This is better than the PS3 and the H uh, and the Xbox 360 version. And apparently, this quite considerably it's considerably different in places as well. So um, yeah, but this is a lot of fun. I've been playing this um, as well, and yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. It's very um, sort of true to the film. Uh, license. Um, apparently the Wii version is really good because you know they use the things in Ghostbusters for the ray, the ray beams or whatever, to sort of go in on the Wii you're actually pointing at the screen so and you've got to kind of wrestle the Wii remote to get the ghosts into the catcher thing whatever that thing is that they catch the ghosts in but yeah it's a really good game Ghostbusters and again it was really cheap it was like two quid or something and this is the last game, I only picked this up this afternoon before coming home and doing this video. And that is, um, and I got it because you don't see it around that much and I have been after it. Uh, I do need to get the first part because this is volume 2 and that is Capcom Classics Collection. And it's got such classics on as 1941, Avengers, Black Tiger, Block Block, Captain Commando, Echo Fighter or Eco Fighters, Knights of the Round, Kings, the King's Dragon, no, the King of Dragons, Last Jewel, Mega Twins, Magic Sword, Quiz and Dragon, Side Arms, Speed Rumbler, Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2, Turbo, Strider, Strider's a really good game, uh, Three Three Wonders, Tiger Road, and Varth. So there you go, some Capcom classics. But um, yeah, I think this uh, this was a fiver. But you know, there's a lot of games on it for the fiver. So yeah, I'll just have to try and get older part one. And uh, the only other thing I got, which I'll um, show you in a minute, is I actually got a hold of a CRT TV, which I've been after for eight. Well, I did have a CRT. And if you watch some of my older videos, I don't know if it's on this channel or it was on my old channel. I used to have a big CRT behind me here, um, but it was a bit. The picture wasn't great on it. Um, and it was too big for this room. I've only got this little space here to do all my gaming stuff in. And it was just too big for the room. So I ended up getting rid of it. Because what I used to have, I used to have all my um, kind of mon stuff um, in front of me here, which is behind the camera, which you can't see. And then I had all my retro kind of, all my retro consoles set up behind me here on like the TV stand and a big CRT. But it just took up too much room, so I ended up getting rid of it. And I've been kind of running my old consoles through various other means to play them. But I've been after, I was after a Sony Trinitron um, TV, CRT. And, but the very hard to find portable ones, especially now. I mean, CRTs, decent CRTs are hard to find anyway, but portable ones are even harder. And then this guy put, I was going through Gumtree and this guy put one on and it was for free. He just said you need to come collect it. So I went down there and collected it and I picked it up and I'll put some pictures over me speaking now as I speak and this is it. Uh, yeah it's a 12, is it 14 inch, I think it's a 14 inch, um, is it 14 or 12, I think, I can't remember. It's a portable anyway, it's a Sony Trinitron portable and it's black which is even better because it kind of matches everything else. Uh, and yeah I got it for nothing off Gumtree, I just went and picked it up and the guy said yeah he'd had it for he had it since he was a teenager, he's looked after it um, and he was moving out and he just wanted rid of it. So yeah, and that was it. So I was made up to get that and um, a free pickup and free is always good. So thanks for watching. Um, I shall be back with another video soon and um, take care. Please click like and subscribe and uh, I shall speak to you later. Bye.